it was cracking everybody <clears throat> so I started trying to film this earlier and uh, I had to jump on my machine and take care of something so try this again so this is gonna be uh, another video it has to do with the damn coronavirus um, I don't even know what I'm gonna name this one yet but it has to do with because a couple of people asked me, hey, what do you think is going to happen in the joint? And so, you know, that's because a lot of people, even like the SEALs used to say when I was in there, now you guys got better access to medical care than we do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Shit. A lot of people out here think the same thing, but people out here don't understand. A lot of the doctors in prison are there because they've been hit with malpractice suits out here. And so they got to go in there. While I was in prison, I wound up suing um, a couple of the doctors in Pelican Bay. Right? And uh, through discovery, when I filed it, because I filed it uh, pro per, right? I filed my own case, but I filed it in the feds. And so, you know, when it came time for trial, only, only two of them. It was three of them I sued. One settled out of court with me. And then the other two took me to trial. The feds don't like you being trying to represent yourself. So they wound up appointing me some attorneys right at the end towards the trial time. Um, and that's when I was able to find out that the doctors that work in the CDC get paid a minimum of $1,200 a day. And they only have to see, I think it was 10, 10 or between 10 and 15 inmates a day. Um, most of the visits in prison are 15 minutes. So, 15 minutes times 15 inmates. And they get $1,200 for the day. Uh, in prison, everybody that's been in prison knows if you run across a doctor, um, like we had a doctor in the shoe up there in the bay. She was cool, man. She would like, when you would go over there and you really had something wrong with you, she would prescribe medication. They got rid of her. They, they get rid of the ones that are actually trying to help you. So, another thing is, I've personally, personally seen three, t it, was, it might have even been more, but three that I can remember, three times, dudes went into medical complaining of chest pains, shortness of breath and whatever. They took the blood pressure, told me, ain't nothing wrong with you, sent them back to the cell, they were dead in the morning right um so that's the type of medical they have in there i've seen dudes break bones you know break an ankle and they will tell them hey here's some ice and just drink a lot of water there's nothing wrong with you it's, it's you're going to be all right you know and all that leads to lawsuits uh taxpayers get to pay for that um but so there's two things two incidents that I can talk about because honestly before I even go into them over 24 years I did on that last term right I did over three in YA and then did over 24 in the state in the, in the joint right and I don't even have an idea how the CDC's the CDC, I bet, doesn't even have an idea. Because what they say in Sacramento isn't what's gonna happen in each individual prison. The prisons do what the fuck they want. They know when Sacramento's gonna come and then they get right when Sacramento's coming. As soon as they leave, they go back to doing whatever the fuck they wanna do. That's just how the CDC works for the most part. So, I'll tell you this. So, I was in, I was in the shoe, um, for Y2K, right? 1999. Uh, what, what fucking five was I in? I think I was in, I was in C, I was in C11, right? And, um, you know, every, every day in prison is just another day. Christmas is another day. Your birthday. All them days are just like, I never paid attention to the days, you know. 
Well, back then, the shoe, the shoe was very, 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 very quiet. Like, probably the quietest place you can think of is what the shoe was. Like, you throw a fart and everybody knows who did it. Take a piss, like anything. Um, so you hear everything. You hear what's going on in the other pods. And we could hear one of the section doors open. And you could hear a cart. And you could hear hoodas. So right away, everybody, you know, people jump up and all the pods, boom. You think it's going to be a pod raid. A pod raid is when all the hoodas come in. Every There's a hoodah assigned to each cell. So every hoodah as they're running in, they know which cell they're going to run to. Turn around, cuff up, and, you know, and they go in there, strip you out. Boom, search your cell. Those are pod raids. So we're hearing it. First thing you need to do, if you got something on hand that you need to put away, you put that shit away. Uh, but you could hear everybody, hey, homes, what the fuck is that? Is that a pod raid? And we could hear this, like, slamming sound. Bah! We're like, damn, is that a fucking, are those are trace slots? But they were moving kind of fast, you know? Ooh. So they start in A, B, C, D, E, F. So they're coming around. I was an F pod. And um, we're like, what the fuck is this shit, man? But nobody's hollering out. So it's like, okay, it's, it's something. This is something different. So they come into our fucking, uh, in our pod, right? And the hood that's pushing this cart, and you see these black slabs of metal, right? And we're looking like, what the fuck is that? Well, on the back side of the doors, in the shoe, there's a flap, right? Just a little flap. And we never, I never knew what that shit was for. I never, they had never used them for nothing. So I was like, well, it was some kind of fucking weird thing they did when they built the door. Nah. We found out that day what they were for. On the cart was black pieces of steel about this big. I don't know, I don't know how thick they were. And they came in and they slid it in that thing. On the side of the door, that little slot. And then they padlocked it. They did it to every cell, and they didn't say nothing to us. And they walked out. We were like, what the fuck? And we're looking at the, you know, this. it's like when you, when you, if you, anybody's got a cat in their house, and you just put a, put a plastic bag in the middle of your living room, and watch that cat be all over that fucking thing, and inspect it. That's how we were. We're looking at the door, and then it hit us like, Hey, homes, these fucking doors can't open now. No matter what, they can't open. And it was December 31st, 1999. And we're like, this is that Y2K shit. And no bullshit. I don't give a fuck. Other bottles that were there could say whatever the fuck they want. I got a little nervous. I was like, oh, whoa, wait a minute. I said, damn, this is some real shit. What are they about to do? Because, you know, we've always heard that shit. They got to kill us all if something happens. And... You know, the world was going to end. And, and I remember my Sally asking me. He said, hey, homie. Hey, do you think these hoodas would come, like, cell by cell? They just start spraying in the cell? And I said, you know what, homie? No bullshit. If these hoodas had the balls to come in here and shoot, I'm going I'm to be like, hold up. Don't, don't spray the cell. I'm going to walk straight to this tray slot, put my face in it, and say, get your money. And, I, and he's like, what? Are you going to do that? And I said, yeah. I said, what you going to do? He said, I'm going to be dodging bullets. I said, and if you survive with three or four bullets in you, what you going to do then? Die slow? But anyways, so that was the CDC. They were padlocking us in. Guarantee you, if shit would have went bad, the way they were saying it was going to go bad, they were going to run out that motherfucker and go to their family and protect their family and let us die in themselves. They ain't no way they padlocked themselves thinking we'll be back and, and save these food. So, that's one incident, right? And um, I, I hesitated in making this video because I know a lot of my subscribers, I know a lot of my viewers have family members in prison. And I don't want you guys to worry, but at the same time, um, we need to know, you know, like I don't, like I said, I don't know what, exactly what, what they're doing in there. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how they 
what their what their procedures are but i know that the cdc can put out any policy they want every individual prison does whatever the fuck they want the warden has his discretion to do whatever the fuck he wants within the law <clears throat> so another time i was in a, i was in that say and um i remember they came around with dinner right so it was a normal day man and we ate our dinner and my sally as soon as we finished he, he was like hey homie you feel sick and i go nah he goes man i got that little thing in, the, in my throat like that little itch homes he goes i think i'm gonna get sick and i was like i don't guess it luckily knock on wood I've never had the flu. I've never, I've never gotten no bad sicknesses like that or nothing. So I'm with you. Ah, you old motherfucker, you get sick. I don't even get sick, right? Went to sleep. And in the morning when I woke up, I had, like, no strength. And, like, I was hurting. Like, my kidneys were hurting. And, like... It, it was a weird ass feeling like I was, and my Sally was an older cat, right? And I remember crawling out of the bed and I was, I was in the top bunk crawling off the bed and I was like, fuck, eh? And I told him, hey, how do you feel? And he's like, hey, homie, something ain't right. And I pounded on the neighbor's door to my left. Hey, homie, you guys, you guys feel all right? And they were like, yeah, we're cool. I'm like, damn. Pounded up to the, that was on the left, to the right, we pound, I pound, mm. hey, how you guys, and they were like, you, they weren't even on their door, they were like, hey, homes, we're fucked up, and so you could hear other cells start asking, hey, homes, you all right, and so, it was every single cell, every single cell, and I'd say, except for like, I think they said it was seven of them, wasn't sick. Right? None of us knew what the fuck we had. But all of us were in pain. Like, I personally, I can't talk, talk about nobody else's pain. Fuck. But I felt like somebody had my kidneys and was just going like, like not even going like this, but was like, had them like this and was just going like this to him. It was, it was badass pain. I was hot as hell. Then go to freezing cold. I felt like I needed to throw up and I never threw up. I had zero strength. And remember, I went to sleep feeling fine, perfect. And I woke up like that. And so the, the first day, you know, everybody's a tough guy. So the medical comes around, but they're at, hey, are you guys all right? You know, like, yeah, man, we're all wrong. We're cool, thank you. And then in the morning they come around and we're like, hey, you could hear people like, hey, man, Something's wrong with me. And they were like, nothing wrong with you. You all right? But imagine now. So by the second day in the evening, every single cell was telling them something's not right. We're hurting, man. They're, 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 we're something, something fucked us up. And they're like, you all right? You just play, you just got a cold. You know, they not, not pulling anybody out, not Hold, like, hold on a minute. How was the whole entire ad sick sick? Not, like, nothing. You know? And it was weird because it went like that for three days. On the fourth day, as quickly as it came, it went away. During those three days, nobody went to yard. Nobody moved. Nobody went to showers. No, You were stuck. Like, it was, it was some weird shit. I personally believe we got somebody... I don't know if it was intentional or not. I believe it was food poisoning. And uh, it was crazy, man. But those are two experiences that I had in prison. And, and you know, because I was thinking about like, damn, man. Shit out here is getting crazy. By the way, off, off track, but I heard that the whole entire barrier, barrier got put on a, like a sort of a lockdown. I mean, they can go to work. I mean, excuse me, they can go to the store, they can go to the doctor, uh, but they don't, they want everybody in the houses and shit. So, uh, 
Everybody send their prayers out to everybody out there in the Bay Area, man. Be safe. Hopefully nobody starts fucking taking advantage of this shit and, you know, doing stupid shit, looting or whatever. But, um, anyways, man, uh, this, like I said, I don't want to, I don't want to alarm anybody who has family members in there, but I want you to be aware and uh, this is, I don't know what we could do. You know, I don't know what, I know that uh, everybody who has a family member in prison, and I know you're concerned about them with this, because like I said, out here people are fucking going crazy, man. And in there, once they, you know, cops, do not run the prison. Everybody knows that. Cops do not run the prison. All they do is open and shut the door. The thing is, is once they shut it, you're stuck in there, you know? And so, those that have uh, family members and loved ones in, in prison, um, whatever concerns that you have right now, because you see what's going on out here and how ridiculous it is out here, if, whatever concerns that you have, Talk to your city councilman. Talk to your assemblyman. Send them emails. Tell them what prison your loved one is in and that you're concerned about their health. You're concerned about the, the medical care, the medical delivery system in the California Department of Corrections. Because, and let them know, look, I voted for you. Whether you voted for them or not, whether you're, whether you're even a registered voter, you tell them, I voted for you. And I want, I, if you want my vote again, you're going to look after my loved one. And there's times that that shit works. If they get enough emails, they get enough phone calls, believe me, they're going to bother the CDC and let them know, hey, man, look, this, let you know, hey, man, look, I tried for you. And, and, and maybe that'll help. Maybe not. But that's all you can do. And sometimes that's a powerful weapon, man. So I don't want to make this a long ass video. I already see it's too long as it is. So with that, I'm out.